Hello and welcome to Creatively Rich. I have Nanette Saylor here, who is the owner and founder of Conscious Creators Cafe, which is a Facebook group that she runs um, to help people be more creative, which is so fun. Yeah. Hi, Nanette. I'm so glad to have you. So glad to be here. Excellent. So you have made a pretty amazing life change from yeah. selling your house to moving into an apartment. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the, the move came at a time when neither myself or my partner, Bill, and I expected it. We were sitting across the table from each other one day and said, you know, we're really tired of mowing the lawn and doing all these things. And I suggested we could consider selling the house because the market had started to come back and we like to be fluid. And he looked across the dinner table and said, really? And I said, yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think the answer is we should rent. And so that's what we did. We, within a week, I had a realtor friend come over. She had an appraisal come. We decided the number looked like it was going to be right. And 75 days later, we were under contract and on our way. So yeah. That's and we lived in that house for 14 years, I guess. So we had been happy homeowners for a long time. And we just were ready to be in a place where we didn't feel strapped and, and tied down by that. And renting was the answer. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I understand that there was some like hesitation there. I mean, I, I know I have a little hang up about the renting thing. Like somehow that feels a little... I don't know. Like I associate that with somebody coming out of college and renting an apartment. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's been an interesting transition at this stage in our lives where we're clearly not coming out of college. We're at that stage where we both have grown children and, you know, a lot of people settle into their paid off homes and just kind of stay in that big old home until they make a next life choice. And we really um, had, we had also been little by little, downsizing in lots of other ways and and not and not from the perspective of limiting expenses necessarily but from the perspective of simplifying and you know, what I've come to understand is if I want to create new experiences in my life I need to make room for those and I can only make room for those if I let go of things that are holding me down and particularly in South Florida, where we have to deal with hurricanes and shutters and all of that kind of stuff. Homeownership, it takes, it, there's a whole bunch of responsibility that comes with it that we just said, you know what, we're, we're done with that. Been there, done that. It's not, we're, we're no longer checking that box because we have. And now we're at a stage where, you know what, we'd like to travel, we'd like to be, we have a boat, we'd like to spend more time and energy there. We, lots of other things were taking our attention or could take our attention if we let go of this one thing. And, you know, part of the thought too was that we wanted to be, we wanted to continue to stay close to water. We had lived about two miles from the beach um, very close, sort of in the eastern burbs, if you will, and the, the areas that gave us really easy access to water. Uh, and one of the thoughts we had was, well, gee, if we became renters, could we move over and be literally on the beach? And the answer is yes. And as, you know, and how does it get any better than that, right? So... <laughs> So now we have a, an apartment where the intercoastal is our backyard. We get to go down. The grill is there. We have this beautiful dock. I we go down and watch the sunset almost every night that we're around. And right out the front of the building across the street is private beach access. And so um, we really have found a, a super, super solution. And we have not really that much less square footage. We, in order to be easterly where we were, we had a fair amount of yard. We had a little house. We've never been big home people. So, you know, I need a bed. I need a kitchen. I need a bathroom. And, and I need a place to kind of be my office. So now, now in the downsize, we share an office, which we didn't before. It's okay. It, it's uh, brought a lot of, a lot of, um, new energy into our lives and you know I sit out on the balcony I can see the ocean I can smell the salt I can hear the waves 
And that's, um, it's really special, really, really special. Okay, I'll come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Anytime. Amazing. Yeah, we're, we're, um, we're, the, the only thing I don't have is a guest room. So anybody who comes has to be willing to sleep on an air mattress on the floor or the couch, which is long enough. Bill has to have a couch that's long enough for somebody to lay on. So, <laughs> so it is long enough. But. So I, I think my favorite part about this whole thing is that you told me that not only do you not have any maintenance, but because you're in an apartment complex, you can just have somebody come change a light bulb that goes out. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. And um, in my previous life, I was a hotel manager. And so it was really important to me that we not have maintenance to deal with. Um, yes, I can change light bulbs and all that stuff myself. I can fix a toilet even. Uh, when we were looking, a lot of the options could have been with condo owners. And we chose specifically to be in a rental community because they have 24 hour maintenance and, and that's what they do. It's part of their makeup. When, when you rent from an independent owner, then you have a whole lot of other potential issues with whether or not that owner is going to be responsive. And I just didn't want to take that chance. And I'm, I, I love that. Yeah. For anything, we just call the office, we call the maintenance number and they come and they fix it. And it, and we don't have to argue about it. You know, maybe it's because we broke this thing or we did that. No, is they just come and they fix it because that's what they do in rental apartments. So um, it was a conscious choice to do that. And there aren't that many of those options in the area that we wanted to be in. So um, we were, we were really fortunate to find this one. Well, it's interesting because it, I mean, you're totally redefining luxury, right? Because yeah. Luxury in my mind is not having to deal with any of that nonsense right. and you just don't have to. Right. Right. And it's in a rental, which, you know, somehow is contrary to what we believe on, on sort of that normal trajectory. And um, I think that's the piece that is, is the most important in, in my redefining myself, when I reclaimed my space, if you will, in the world as a creator, that's what became possible, is that I let go of all of the definitions by somebody else's terms and started to look at what worked for me and what I really wanted. And it's made it possible for me to do things in my life that most people would say, wait a minute, how, how, how is that? How is that happening? And it's mostly just because I started to look at things without the restrictions of the rules, according to somebody else. And um, it's made it, you know, it's made a lot of things possible for me that I, um, you know, 15 years ago wouldn't have expected. Like your car. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, my little VW. Of course, when you move to the beach, you have to have a convertible to go Obviously. with it. Obviously. Right? There's no other way. <laughs> yeah, no other way. No other way. And I had been a convertible owner years earlier when I ha was you know, a successful six-figure manager of, of somebody else's business. Mm -hmm. And in between, I made some choices that led me to the old lady Toyota Camry. Got, not quite sure how that happened, but ended up kind of in that pattern and actually it was because I was doing a lot of highway driving. Uh, now I don't do any highway driving again. And so when my lease came up, I started to revisit that dream of having a little VW convertible. And through a series of trial and error things. I originally thought I was going to get a, an older model one, a used one, and not get into a, a new vehicle uh, financing or lease again. And it turned out that it just was worked on all levels to end up with a brand new shiny blue classic VW that I get to drive down the beach every day when it's sunny with the top down. So yeah, and it's special. It's special. I just the other day, I had the experience of hearing from someone who had never ridden in a convertible oh. what, you know, what it was like to drive down the beach road with the top down. And it really reminded me how, 
how special that is and how happy I am to have made that choice. Because again, I could have could have just gone right back to Toyota and done you know, that. It was easy, right, to just go right back to the other guys. And uh, this time I said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do something different and ready to, to really honor, again, that part of myself that really wanted this thing. And I could do it for this. It actually cost me less than my Camry did. So works out just fine. <laughs> That's even better, right? How, yeah. how amazing to have exactly the life that you want and have it cost less. Yes. And yes. With, with the house, it was about the same, right? Like you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when you factor out the worry about having a savings account for when that $8,000 air conditioner blows up, mm-hmm. you know, when, you, when you factor that stuff out, this actually in the long, you know, long haul, it's, it's less. Yeah. So. And you don't have to change your own light bulbs. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's well, awesome. Yeah. It's well, working on lots of levels. So. <laughs> Good. Good. So Nanette, will you tell us a little bit about your um, Conscious Creators Cafe and what that what that's all about? Yeah, yeah. So um, Conscious Creators Cafe is a Facebook group. Um, it's open. It's an open public group. We I, I I started that to bring people together who were interested in energizing themselves through creation in whatever form that takes. So some of the things that I talk about over there, I'm a huge fan of Julia Cameron and the Artist's Way morning pages and using journaling to to get in touch with you know and that's that's how I started to get in touch with things like gee wouldn't it be cool to drive a convertible down a one a um and then also the practices of creative visualization and then I also interface with a couple of artist friends there um, who are involved in things like in November this is art every day month uh, through another website so we kind of promote that a little bit um, and, and lots of different things uh, that, that take all kinds of forms. Sometimes it's photography. Sometimes it's um, it, Julia Cameron also encourages people to go out once a week on an artist date, which is a date with yourself to do something new and fun. Um, and, and just to, to refill the well, if you will, really what this is about for me is about reminding everyone that we really are the creators of our own lives. We get to do it any way we want to. And, and we have to flex that muscle to get started, to be confident, to start to make changes that impact some of these bigger things like where you live and how you live. But it starts with picking up a pencil and doodling or coloring for the first time with really cool glittery gel pens that come in all kinds of nifty colors, right? And getting excited about that and remembering what that feels like. So then once you've got that feeling in your bones, now when you're having a new experience, you can say, well, gee, that's, that's creating that same experience in my physical self. Maybe that's telling me that there's something about this that I want to bring into my life more and more. And, um, and often, you know, I think the other really important thing is that often these things, they don't take a lot of resources. They don't take a lot of money. It doesn't, and it, it doesn't even take a lot of time. Even if you just carve out 15 minutes or 30 minutes to do something that you wouldn't otherwise have done, then the next time you're making your coffee in the morning, you might happen to notice how good it smells and that it really matters if you put it in a mug that has something on it or was a gift from someone. And now you're connecting to it in a deeper way and your life is fuller. And that's really what it's all about. Excellent. I, I just think that that's such an important mission and you know, so aligned with what we're doing here at Creative. Yes. Yeah, thank you for what you do and for bringing attention to all of this and for giving me this opportunity to speak with you and everybody who may find their way to this interview. So thanks very much. Absolutely, absolutely. And we'll um, link in the post to your Facebook page and it's it's free and open to everybody, right? That's yes. excellent, excellent. Yes. So yeah. if you want to join Nanette and her adventures, she's a super cool lady. I highly recommend hanging out with her. <laughs> thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time um, and we'll chat soon. All right. Bye for now. Bye. (laughs)